Hello friends, and not yet friends, welcome back to another What I Ate Wednesday, the weekly show where I share all my tasty vegan eats from one day here on Mary's Test Kitchen. And we do have a tasty one today. I woke up to a chilly wind blowing through the condo, which was more than welcome after a week of plus 30. This was perfect for what I had planned for breakfast. Was it a lucky coincidence? No. You guys know I watch the weather forecast more often than is probably healthy. I asked you to guess what my new beanie breakfast was, and I guess I didn't really give you enough hints because no one came close. I prepped this bean vindaloo and rice a day before and I was literally dreaming about it. Been craving it for a while actually since I watched way too many Red Dwarf episodes in one sitting. Obviously, that goes in the microwave. And while that heats up, instant coffee. Quite a dinnery looking meal, but I love dinner for breakfast and breakfast for dinner. There are no rules. This was perfect. Creamy kidney beans really soak up the flavors from warming spices like ginger and cinnamon, and there's a little tang from crushed tomatoes and lemon juice. All of that on coconut turmeric rice. It was so good. I'll be sharing the bean vindaloo recipe on my blog pretty soon, so make sure you've signed up for email updates there if you want it. While you're there, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and turn on notifications so you don't miss a thing. Last week, a few of you asked me how I get my tofu so dry. So this weekend, when I was prepping for the week, I got out the camera just for you. For the meaty, dense type of tofu, I start with the meatiest, densest tofu I can buy, which is normally this extra firm tofu packed in plastic rather than the type that comes in a tub with water. You know what I mean. I've already drained it and now I'm cutting it pretty thin. The thinner you get it, the more surface area you have to blot and absorb that water. Lay the pieces out on a clean kitchen towel and just blot them. I keep clean lint-free cloths just for things like this. Drying off tofu or salad greens or using it to cover rising dough. The humble cotton cloth is one of the most essential kitchen tools in my repertoire. As your cloth gets soaked, you can move the tofu around to drier spaces. And while you get the other parts of your meal ready, just let them sit on the cloth and they'll get even drier. You can put this back in the fridge and store it for three to five days. And if you line your container with clean cloth, it will keep absorbing excess water. Just think osmosis. <laughs> I really just shot this for you without thinking what I was gonna do with it. So this is where having your own blog of recipes really comes in handy. 10 out of 10 would totally recommend starting your own blog, even if it's just to keep all your recipes. So you can guess what I made for lunch on this day then. Gochugaru tofu sandwiches. With aquafaba mayo. I had a little problem with my toaster, so I had to scrape off a whole bunch of charred bread from a pair of these slices. That's okay. Cool cucumber, red onion, and some of that gochugaru sauce. I love this sandwich. It's so good every time and the tofu stays good in the fridge for a while so you can prep ahead. Have you tried this yet? Let me know if you did and what you thought. Later, I had my usual smoothie. Frozen banana, cherries, all-in-one nutrition powder, protein powder, and because this protein powder needs a little extra flavor, I added vanilla soy milk. Delicious as usual. I was feeling the fall vibe with the chillier weather, so I set up to make miso soup for dinner. The blog post and full recipe for this soup is on marystestkitchen.com now, so go over there if you want it, but maybe wait until the end of the video. I'm using medium firm tofu, the kind that's sold in tubs with water. It's also sold as traditional tofu. Handle this type of tofu with gentle hands if you want to keep its shape. It's awesome in tofu scramble too if you like a soft scramble like I do. 
but today I'm making big cubes just because I like the look in soup. You're gonna wanna pull out your big pot for this soup. This is the biggest pot that I own. Over medium or medium high heat, you're gonna want some oil for sauteing. Or not, you could do the water saute method for this part if you wanted, but I prefer with the oil for flavor. Toss in a big juicy hunk of ginger in there. You'll want to take it out before serving, but for now it's adding its gingery goodness to that oil. Add sliced mushroom. And crushed garlic. You'll want to watch that heat and stir every now and again to make sure that crushed garlic doesn't burn. It shouldn't too easily though, especially if you add other veggies like carrots. The water from the mushrooms and carrots will slowly come out and prevent things from sticking or burning. When the mushrooms are really, really soft, add the tofu. Then add enough water to cover everything. I used about six cups. And a tablespoon of soy sauce. There's no need to stir. Just cover and let this come to a boil. When it comes to a nice rolling boil, turn down the heat to low and add your sliced red pepper and sliced scallions. Plus kale or your choice of other dark leafy greens. If you need to add some more water to submerge everything, go ahead and do that. Or you can use veggie broth if you like, it's up to you. It'll only take a minute for these veggies to turn bright. So turn off the heat and then we can add miso paste. I started with two tablespoons of organic miso paste. It's better to scoop out some broth and then mix the paste in and then add the whole mixture into the soup, but I'm too lazy for that. I just try to mix well and hope that I don't leave some huge salty chunks in there. Make sure you taste your broth and see if you want to adjust. I added one more tablespoon of miso paste. Lastly, add something acidic to brighten up all the flavors. I'm using lemon juice, but you can also use rice vinegar or red wine vinegar. Just use your taste and preference to guide you. Sprinkle on some chopped scallion and sesame seeds, if you like. And that is really good soup. The broth is light and savory and that lemon tang brings out all the flavors. The tofu is soft, but it has this chewy quality around the edges that is really satisfying. The mushrooms are bursting with flavor. I hope you try this recipe too. It's perfect for weeknights because it's so quick and tasty and healthy, like being low in fat, but full of nutrients. And that was my food day. No sugary garbage this time because I needed to slow right down on that stuff. Especially because these donuts happened. Recipe video coming soon. So subscribe if you haven't already and turn on notifications so you don't miss these. Thanks so much for watching my friends. Please give this video a like if you liked it and share on Facebook and Twitter and all that good stuff. Bye for now.